I've been extremely lucky to spend a lot of time doing research on animals in the Antarctic pack ice. The pack ice is not just one big sheet of ice, it's a sea of floating plates of ice, ice flows. These flows move continuously, driven by wind and currents. The ice grows and recedes each year. In September, the Antarctic pack ice is at a maxima and extends to cover an area three times the surface of Australia. By late summer, in February, the ice retreats to its minimum extent. Many animals are tied to this strange world of floating ice flows. For instance, the crab eater seals. They spend their entire life in the floating Antarctic pack ice. And crab eater seals are one of the most abundant large mammals on Earth. They're about the size of an elk, and there may be as many as 50 million of them. And no, they don't eat crabs, they eat krill. To feed on krill, they have specialised lobe teeth that fit together to form a sieve. In fact, many of the animals in Antarctica feed on krill, like seabirds, fish, whales, penguins and seals. The krill swarm together for protection against these predators. Billions of krill can form a single swarm that extends over kilometres. They're the foundation of the entire Antarctic food web. The krill's life cycle is closely tied to the pack ice and we've lost pack ice here off the Western Antarctic Peninsula, an important krill nursery. Over the past 30 years, there's been an 80% reduction in Antarctic krill. Winter time's the most difficult for krill, as it is for their predators. In fact, it's at this time that the baleen whales, like the humpback whales, leave the pack ice to migrate north to breed in warmer tropical waters. There's little light through the Antarctic winter. It's mostly dark. Most of the phytoplankton, the floating plant-like organisms, need light to make food by photosynthesis. So there's little phytoplankton over winter, and krill feed on phytoplankton. To survive over winter, the krill scrape algae that grows on the undersurface of the ice. But this is still not a lot of food. So krill use up their body stores. They actually shrink to save energy, and they can even revert to a juvenile form. In later spring, the ice starts to melt. Air bubbles that have been trapped in the ice when it was growing are now released. The krill gather up these bubbles in their beating legs and graze on microscopic algae that grows over the surface of the bubbles. As the ice melts further, sunlight penetrates deeper into the water. The phytoplankton grow and reproduce rapidly and in some areas there's so much phytoplankton that the clear Antarctic water turns deep green. It's now that the krill leave the safety of the undersurface of the ice. They swim down into the water to harvest the phytoplankton. Spring's also the time the crab eater seals breed. They synchronise their breeding over a few weeks. A pregnant female will haul out onto an ice flow. A male crab eater seal, called the attending male, will join her. She gives birth to a single large pup. The pup's nearly half her own size but that male's not likely to be the pup's father. The pup grows and weans quickly. The mum nurses her pup for only three weeks and during that time she'll never leave its side. In fact, she lies between her pup and the attending male. The male's waiting for her to stop feeding her pup because as she does, she'll be ready to mate. So if he can drive her pup away, he can mate with her earlier. But this would mean that her pup would wean underweight and so have less chance of surviving. So she protects her pup from that attending male. Other male crab eater seals may try to approach. They also want to become that attending male. So the male's continuously on watch, ready for a fight with any potential male rival. Once her pup is weaned and the female mates, presumably with that attending male, they leave. And the young weaned crab eater seal is on its own. This plump wiener is vulnerable to predation from leopard seals and killer whales. Crab eater seals roll to evade the jaws of predators. And if they get away and survive, the scarring leaves evidence of the attacker. And in some areas, most crab eater seals bear parallel rake marks, evidence that when they were young, they were attacked by leopard seals. In late summer in February, the pack ice is now at a minimum 
and the young crabeater seals swim together in massive groups of hundreds up to a thousand seals through the open water between the ice flows. The sun now never sets. The sky goes pink as the sun dips onto the horizon. But as March arrives, the air gets cold. Ice crystals appear on the water surface. The pack ice starts to grow again. Until by midwinter, the young crabeater seals about nine months and now less vulnerable to leopard seals attack. Although for the killer whales, they're always on the menu. The sun's now gone again and the pack ice continues to grow until its maximum in September. As spring comes, the ice begins to melt. Phytoplankton bloom, krill feast, and the crab eater seals breed again. And so the cycle continues.